Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm good, Kai. How are you? I'm good. It's been uh, a while. Yeah, it's been a long time, man. Uh, many things have happened. Main thing is that the kids are back to school. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's brought some sort of um, routine back. Yeah, exactly. How is it getting the getting the little one back into school? Yeah, I needed the routine. Yeah. That was the thing that was missing. Um, summer was eventful. I'm home back. But yeah, what, what generally happens when the kids are not in school is that you just end up going much bed much later, waking much later. Yeah. If you're st- still trying to do work, which of course we, ha- we have to do, it's a recipe for disaster, man. Because they're up like late, late. And it's like, that's usually my time to get stuff done. Was yeah. she like not looking forward to going back to nursery? Or she she actually was, alhamdulillah. Um, like there was a little bit of like apprehensiveness, but not really. Like she was much better this year than she was like going back after like being ill last year. Like if she missed... If she missed a week in year that last year, it'd be a struggle to like get her back into that. Oh really? But I think she she needs she needs the the stimulation and she needs the activity. She like she enjoys it. How about you and the kids? Yeah, uh, it, it was pretty okay. Um, maybe that first yeah, like the first day he was like, oh, I don't want to go to nursery, and then he went and he was fine. He got he had a new teacher, so it took some time to get used to a new teacher yeah. and stuff like that. But he's happy here. Yeah. Can can he be like that in the mornings in general? Because sometimes. My daughter was like, in the morning, random morning, she slept, slept enough. She would just say, I don't want to go in. Uh, that's a struggle. I think so. Some, it's not that off, that common, but sometimes, yeah, like the, day, the night before, we try and prep him the night before, we're like, oh, it's Monday tomorrow, yeah. like you got nursery. <clears throat> and so sometimes he's like, oh, I don't want to go to nursery. But it generally, like by the time, by the morning, yeah. he's like jumping and ready to go and stuff. One thing I've changed is, um, I shower him every morning now. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, okay. Have you heard of this thing? It's amazing. <laughs> no, yeah. a, a daily shower. <laughs> yeah, <for> your children. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's so early, you got to leave the house and stuff. That yeah. last time we would shower them like the night before, but um, and now that I shower him in the mornings. Uh, time goes so fast in the morning. They wake up at 5.30 and we got to be out of there. So by the time really we're like downstairs and all that kind of stuff, it's actually 6 a.m. Mm. So, um, and then we got to leave the house at like 7, 7.15, really. Because I've got a lot of traffic on that road because I have to do that, that big U-turn. Are you going to use a new road from now on, the one you, you're talking about today? I think you should. It, yeah, but it still wouldn't change the fact that I had to, I'd have to do this U-turn. You, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, I can't I need to go still, the side of the dual carriageway. Yeah, but still, I think like going Emirates Road will help you, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably, will, I'll try that. Try I, I want you to try it tomorrow first. Be my guinea pig. I tried, it to, I tried it today on the way home. <laughs> Did you just say I trode it? <laughs> I trode <laughs> it. I, I trode it. Yeah. Um, How is it? I, ca- I couldn't work out if it was faster or not. I got a feeling it's about the same um, time wise, but it was definitely a much smoother, more enjoyable journey. Yeah, it added two minutes for me, but it was, it was much more enjoyable. Okay, yeah, yeah that, I wouldn't be surprised that was the case, but yeah, there was less um, waiting to merge. There was less yeah. like cars here and there. It was just like smoother and nicer like scenery. Yeah. You get a desert view, don't you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So essentially, for those of you listening, Kaya and I's children go to the same school, mm. and we've just discovered a new route after a year and a half of being there. Yeah. <laughs> the most inefficient dads you'll ever come across. Yeah, we yeah. found a new way of getting there. That's easier. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so um, uh, so we've got to be out of the house basically. So by the time of like. Um, giving them breakfast straight in the shower out of the shower it's time to go so it's nice now because it's like really, really there's no waiting around that is nice yeah I mean, and also the kids are clean <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, for me the shower is very much part of the nighttime routine for, the, for, the, yeah, for yeah, my yeah. daughter which I'm not a huge fan of I'm it's not, less stress doing it at night time in a way it is uh, in a way oh you is. mean it's that part of the routine as in like she has to have a sh- shower and that's like the beginning of like the yeah. mental yeah yeah that's long so, it is long yeah. and sometimes sometimes we skip it if like she hasn't been out and about if she's been at home we don't we wouldn't really do it but doing it in the morning could be an interesting one but I think your your kids on, on home back they wake up earlier than mine like in relation to the time you have to leave yeah so mine's much more like yeah. rushed yeah I mean it could be annoying because on weekends you never get lying yeah. You're up at 5.30. Like, you can't sleep after for sure. So, yeah. yeah. Once or twice, like, last week, because now my boys are getting older, alhamdulillah, Zachary is going to be four, like, next month, oh, inshallah. inshallah. And Khalil is too. But Khalil is like a, Khalil is too, but he's like an old two because mm. he's got an older brother. Yeah. So, Khalil at two is nothing like what Zachary was like at two. Yes. Um, should I carry on? Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah, I get it. No, no, I, I see that all the time with like the second one that comes along. They just they're constantly watching the other one. They're just learning. Yeah, they learn so much faster along. Yeah, back. so um, 
so it's nice because they kind of do look after themselves and Zachary kind of looks after Khalil which is nice yeah. so there's been the odd night the odd morning where excuse me oh, no. excuse, did I just say odd night <laughs> <Yeah>. dot com <laughs> um, now that you mentioned it uh, so um, yeah there's been the odd morning where I've like fallen back asleep after Fajr and I'm like slowly waking up I'm like hold a second this feels weird and mm. like the kids are already downstairs playing and stuff and okay. like sometimes like Zachary has attempted to like pour the cereal <laughs> like grab Aww. the cereal like pour like he's like, like yeah so but no generally speaking um, yeah, Allah that's good man you have to get up early I was going to ask you about yesterday's um, uh, community course that you did like, oh yes yeah I, wanted, yeah. I, I couldn't make it but it looks good I want to know the concept I read I, I had I had a quick skim yeah. but tell me the the vibe what's the vibe right now okay I'm glad you asked actually so um basically we've obviously got the paid community at Freshly Grounded yes. which if you sign up to our Freshly Grounded newsletter which is tribe.freshlygrounded.com is that it yeah tribe.freshlygrounded.com sign up to the newsletter and then you get prompted as a upsell to join the paid community uh in that community basically the main pretty much the main um, value add is that you get into our Discord community um, where it's like like-minded Muslims, it's segregated and you like can chat. What I noticed was two things. One is that it's not that active. Uh, so we need like more individuals in there. But then I was like, well, while it's not active and people are still paying money for the paid community. Uh, so while it's building up, I want to be able to add value. Yeah. And the second thing I noticed is that um, the most active chats are the business chats. Yes. Uh, like we have different categories in, within the community. There's like business, there's uh, general, um, what else is there? I think it's like a... Tech. Um, yeah. Do you have like a water cooler one, like a meme one? If we do, do we? No, we don't have like a water cooler. We've got a parenting one. Parenting, so that. Yeah. But the most most like um, visited or, or, or populated one is, is, is business. So then I was like, well, how do I add value to make sure that people are getting value out of this? And so... We were, we were like, okay, well, I'll do a weekly call. And so for the last, like, I don't know, like three, four months since the community started, we've been doing this weekly call. But it was like, it was kind of like a drop-in session. People could drop in, have a chat and with me and have asking you questions and stuff like that. And it was really weird doing it, to be honest, because, well, first of all, like, the, the, the pretense is, or the pretense of it is like, oh, come in and have a chat with Faisal, like, it, like that's something special <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. weird do you know what I mean it's like yeah. well, I, I don't have anything to ask for and like and for me it felt weird it was like I don't feel comfortable being like oh guys like hey come have a chat with me like I'm mm. right and so it was weird but I and then I, so I kind of stopped and then Fawaz actually is the one who made me carry on because he was like bro you've got an amana people are paying for this mm. deliverable you can't just not deliver it so I was like, you know what, you're right, it's an amount of so I'll carry on delivering it. And it was the same thing where it was like, people weren't really dropping in, and if they were, it was like, it was like a bit awkward conversations. So I was like, right, I'm offering this deliverable, it needs to be added because it needs to be value added in the community, but it's, um, uh, but it needs to be structured. And so what I decided to do was thinking, all right, well, the business page is the most active. People here have obviously got side hustles and business. My strongest, uh, one of my strongest assets in terms of knowledge base is gonna be the digital marketing space. Uh, Given that obviously I run marketing at Tartil, run marketing obviously uh, by default at Freshly Grounded. Alhamdulillah, seen success in it. Run a marketing agency in Dubai. Um, grew Tartil's uh, downloads from less than a million to six million in 12 months. So back. because of all that, I've, and I, but it's not like, oh, it's because of me who've done that, but I've learned a lot in the process. And um, by being at somewhere like Tartil, you also can invest a lot in your education. So I've, I've been able to gain a lot of education through paid means, like um, getting c certified in certain areas of digital marketing and stuff like that. And um, so I was like, well, I'll, let me just do a, a, make the call every week, a call where I, um, talk about different aspects aspects of uh, digital marketing. Yeah. And so th yesterday was the first one. We started by talking about funnels, and the idea is not that for me to like teach a lecture. It's like mm. conversational. It's relaxed. And it's just off the top of my login. But bro, it was, it was really fun, man. And yeah. I asked for feedback at the end. And if you are in the paid community and you uh, didn't attend or you don't attend, they're all being recorded and added to a private playlist. Okay. Uh, on YouTube and you could just like watch the playlist. So the first one's already on there. And it was a lot of fun. I first, for the first time, felt like I was giving value and not just being like this guy's, oh, come in and have a session with me. Yeah. And then secondly, I asked for feedback and everyone's like, I feel like I learned so much. So um, yeah, it's essentially um, digital marketing <coughs> uh, calls every week, going over the basics, 
an introduction to a digital marketing yeah when i first saw it it seems it seemed very organic like this is exactly what like you'll just be able to sit there and you can chat about it for hours i know you can sit there and just chat about digital marketing for hours so that's a good sign that inshallah it's going to be there's longevity there inshallah so i'm, I'm looking forward to dropping next week inshallah yeah um, I've, I've, I'm, what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to put the first epi- for the first call out for free on my socials that's a good so idea. people get an idea and then they can sign up to the big if they want and um if i remember if i don't just bug me guys in the comments i'm also going to put the paid i'm going to put the free the first one <clears throat> for free out here in the description of this episode so that you can watch that and get an idea of what these calls are like yeah and one thing that surprised me about the community is that there is a lot of brothers in there and i think yeah from what my missus has said to me some sisters as well who have got like side hustles going and they're actually giving advice themselves and they're giving like in that business um what do you call it like a subreddit of discord like a thread uh channel channel they're giving good advice man oh, yeah. sometimes drop in there like people that are advising each other new tactics are dropping new um tools recommending it's a nice resource man 100 percent. yeah it's nice yeah i was listening to my first million today okay i'm catching up i'm like 19 episodes behind I'm yeah crazy. i'm super behind i'm well. very behind yeah there's some um, movie behind so was, uh, there's basically an episode where um sam and sean are talking about their portfolios so they're talking about like where their money is and like, what's it invested in where is it invested in so on and so forth and they got onto the topic of sean's like l's like his failures like okay. where he's lost money right because he's, he's very open about that isn't he's, he to be fair in this episode they're both being quite open okay even sam like he pretty much he didn't give numbers like specific numbers but he's quite like open about where where it all is um but Sean's one specifically, he was, he said something like, and he was joking, but I think he's, he's telling the truth. He's lost more money than most people will make in a lifetime through his like dodgy investments or just like bad decisions, right? And he's, he's still a millionaire, but it got me thinking again of just like <clears throat> this concept of um, our risk is written for us, and you should just like do things, and you're gonna, you're gonna have L's and you're gonna lose money and stuff like that, but. The risk is really, it shouldn't be a it shouldn't be a reason to be fearful of doing things just because you're gonna lose because this guy's a perfect case study of he's lost so much like not just once or once or twice like rep- repeating L's quite frankly throughout his career and yet he's still majorly successful. I'll give you some examples. Yeah, I think his first business was a sushi sushi restaurant business. Yeah, right. Uh, Sean's. Yeah, yeah. Flopped. Right. He wanted to, he wanted it to be like the sushi of Nando's, like a Nando's type thing, but for sushi, okay. flopped. Yeah. Then he, his other thing, so again, this is not like uh, me endorsing Tesla or Bitcoin, but this is what he was investing in, right? Um, he invested in Tesla um, when it was like not that much of a stock that was like high in value. Um, and then he saw some random Reddit conspiracy theory posts about Tesla like lying about their sales, this and that. Because he saw that like, he sold like almost all his Tesla shares and like over the next few months, it just like skyrocketed like three, four, five, like, to the point where had he have kept it, he would have made over $10 million just from the Tesla stock. But he sold out on that. Bitcoin, similar thing. He had loads of Bitcoin from early. He went to a wedding. His Indian auntie started talking about Bitcoin or, or crypto in general. And he was like, why is my Indian auntie talking about crypto? That's like, sounds like a bubble. Let me sell it. He sold it. And then like, again, like 10x or whatever. He could have made again 10, 20 million. So there's a few other stories in there. Point is, he kept making these <laughs> wrong, wrong decisions, wrong calls, and just like losing out on money. And yet he kept going. And, in, and now he's got like, He's, he's, I'm, I'm sure he's like oh, worth over 20 million $20 million because he's he sold a company so on and so forth my point being there's a lot of people who couldn't fathom losing that much like taking that much of a, an L over and over again like losing potentially 20 40 million dollars in like sort of lost investment or just bad decision I can imagine a lot of people just that happens to them and they're just like you know what let me just get a job and like just stop this stuff I'm being this ain't working but he kept going kept going kept going and I feel like that lack of, lack of like, fear is one thing, but it's like lack of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? No, it's not lack of, it's having tenacity, right? So it's like he continued to go, even though like you just potentially, not potentially, he actually did lose out on like $20 million on one of the Tesla things or Bitcoin things. I feel like that's something we need more of, man. Tenacity, just in yeah. general. You know, I feel like, and I feel like it doesn't, it's not just about money. I've, I run, I've run to a lot of brothers who, they don't outright say it, but you can tell when I ask them that, like, oh, are you like looking to get married? Are you getting married? Blah, blah, blah. And they seem like apprehensive and like they don't, they don't say it in so many words, but it seems like they're a bit like scared of the process. What's the definition of tenacity? Is it like going all in or just no, doing think, things with a bit of confidence? I think the definition is like even like when it, when like, being when tenacious, you, when you, <laughs> yeah, when you do fail, you still keep going. Let me, let me, let me double check that. Being very determined. Being very determined. Being very determined. There you go. 
So. Yeah, that's that, that's true. We need we need way more of that. Yeah. Yeah. So in business, in lifestyle, 100%. in Dean, yeah. Hundred percent, bro. Imagine, imagine. You, yeah, the marriage thing's a big one. You have those oh. conversations, and like, it's like, um, yeah, people being like, not re- like, um, they're scared of being like rejected. Scared. They're going to be rejected. But it's like, bro, you're gonna like rejection failures. Yeah, you like, will get yeah, rejected. You're a reject. <laughs> yeah, you will get rejected. Yeah. yeah, you can't be that much of a loser. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna happen. So yeah. Do it now. Yeah, I mean, no, it's true. It is true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And uh, you don't have to be a loser to be to be rejected or rejected. Everyone's gonna get rejected at some point, yeah. like, whether it's in business or you lose or yeah. whatever. And you sh- that shouldn't like your confidence and tenacity shouldn't hinge on that. Yeah, my um, my granddad has been a huge inspiration in my life. And I remember he always used to say to us a similar kind of thing. He used to say, um, be... Uh, um, <laughs> he used to say, be... Uh, be tenacity. <laughs> no, he used to say this word that was like... Always always like, um, have a, like... It's like saying have a backbone. What's the word for having a backbone? Um, well, like a single word. Yeah, dis- uh, discipline... Um, I yeah, I, I can't remember the word. Principled? It's principled? Re- Sorry? Principled? No, it, 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 it's a really obvious word. I can't remember what it was. For us, can you just do synonyms of backbone? Oh, synonyms of, prin- yeah, I don't know. Tenacity. Backbone? Yeah, tenacity, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, the concept of it was like not being spineless, right. uh, having, having confidence, mm. uh, having, um, you know, uh, a bit of a... Fortitude. Backbone, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. And he would always instill that. He used to be like, um, you know, not, not condoning this, but I remember he used to say to me, he's like, he, he lived on the eighth floor mm. in, uh, on, in, in a block of flats. And so sometimes when we were kids, like at nighttime, you're kind of going into the block of flats and you're like a bit scared. Oh, yeah, like yeah. you press a button and lift and like you're a bit like anxious about like who's going to come out of the lift mm. or whatever. And he used to see that. He used to be like, when I was a kid, we used to like run through the graveyards, <laughs> which <laughs> yeah. I don't condone. <laughs> we used to be like, you lot need to like, like yeah. man up a bit. Mm. Um, and so I always remember that about him because he, he is a big inspiration of mine. And as much as he, um, he, he, he was that old school kind of, you know, like you say, like, just, just go for yeah. things. Man. Don't be so soft in that, in that yeah. regard of like going to attack things. Uh, yeah, I think that boils, it boils down to that. Like, don't that be breeds success, doesn't it? Yeah, don't be so like, you're, you're, you're 100% gonna be tested. Yeah. in your livelihood with family you're going to be tested why like why why even um, entertain the idea of being soft about it yeah it's going to happen you might as well have a plan continue on with it and keep trying and again going back to your risk it's about specifically fun oh, well, i suppose risk is not just finances it's also spouse and so on and so forth it's all written for you just go and do stuff yeah at full uh, at full force uh, i often when i'm talking about something similar i give this analogy to some people which is the idea of um uh, the, the the concept of doing things uh, fully, mm. uh, I give the um, I give the connotation of a uh, f- uh, uh, um, is it a free a free jump? I, you know, as soon as the mic comes, on, I lose all my words. Yeah. <laughs> Who are those guys that jump from building yeah, to building? Yeah, um, parkour. Yeah, free, free runners. runners yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna think about a free runner. A free runner. I, when he's jumping from one building to another, and there's nothing like to protect. There's nothing to like support him. If he has an ounce of like lack of confidence yeah. that he's gonna make the jump, yeah. he won't make the jump mm. because that nerves will like make him delay a step yep. or do a step too early or like second guess mm. a step. In the same way, there's many things in our life where we have to go with that kind of mentality. Where it's like, look, I'm gonna go all in. I can't do it with a bit of anxiety. So, um, and on top yeah. of that, bro, like, alhamdulillah for Islam, we've got. Uh, through the religion we've got so many tools to deal with these like yes you've got istikhara to before when you make decisions and so on and so and you just tawakali rely on Allah yeah reliance upon like, Allah what's, what's the problem here yeah. just do things man yeah. do you know what I mean like what's, what's the point like again we'll go back to the marriage stuff because I feel like we talk about finances a lot with marriage it's like again I do get a feeling that sometimes I meet some younger brothers where it's like they just I, I don't want to say scared but just a little bit like not sure about mm. what the process is like and well, what if I get rejected once or twice and knocks my confidence up bro like who cares? Just yeah. start doing stuff, man. How is it going to get done if you don't start doing stuff? Yeah, that, bro, that's exact, exactly, bro. You couldn't say anything about how things are going to get done. Things just need to get done. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't get things done, bro, then what happens is everyone around you ends up, it, uh, does get things done and then you sit there in regret and you don't want to be in regret. And you sit there undone. Yeah. 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 Everyone's done, you're undone. Uh, there's one thing you don't want to be, <laughs> it's undone. undone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, bro, uh, <laughs> do you know what this reminds me of, bro, is um, about, we're talking about regret and stuff, is, um, 
a concept that I was recently deeping mm. and I've like spoken at nauseum to Fawaz about, um, which is the idea of gathering data, mm. right? So, <laughs> no, this is important because- and monetizing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so everybody here, just give us your email. Yeah. So, bro, um, there's a huge lesson I've learned over the past year working with, um, I, I, when I joined Tartila, I was the first non-technical hire. And um, what, so I've learned a lot in the past year working with like these uh, people who are really technical. These guys are like AI developers and developers and, and um, engineers and just other synonyms <laughs> yeah. of the word developer, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> web, web developers and, developers yeah. and coders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, but what you find in like the digital marketing world in tech world of that is, is how important data is. And actually, in this world, um, especially when you're, when you're marketing, no money uh, has gone to waste if you learn a lesson, if you gather data from that. Mm. And bro, that just has, being in that space has opened my eyes up to, to, to that also being true for life. Yeah. So I've, for the longest time, been um, two things, uh, indecisive, and a legend, <laughs> so, uh, uh, indecisive and uh, uh, and regret regretful in a lot of things, and so um, <laughs> the problem with being really like serious off of this, though, uh, um, the the problem of being indecisive and regretting things is um, you just like always in your head, you're always overthinking things, you can't move on, yeah. and I don't know, it just the, uh, recently the penny dropped for me, and I thought if you make a decision. First of all, it's so important to make a decision. Mm. If you listen to How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie, amazing book, one of my favorite books of all time, changed my life. Um, one of the most important lessons in that book is the importance of making a decision and then following the decision through. Mm. Uh, that in itself reduces 95% of worry and anxiety. Now, uh, but however, so, so um, what I was getting at is, um, often what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll make a decision and then I'll like, think, oh, what if I made the other decision? Or I'll regret the decision. And what dropped for me recently is that the analogy of gathering data in the world of tech or business is the same as gathering data in life. And so now I'm at peace with any decision I make because when I make a decision, even if it's the wrong decision, I tell myself I've gathered data. I was speaking to you about this the other day, wasn't I? Yeah. We, like, we were struggling to find parking and we found a parking spot and we're like, oh, we, we paid a stupid amount of money for parking. But like, you know what? We gather data. Next time we come here, yeah. we know to avoid this car park or to like whatever. And when you see life like that, you think, oh, with every decision I make, I get cleverer. Yeah. <laughs> cleverer yeah. is that a word. I get smarter because you've gathered data now and that data goes into your brain, your data bank. And now you know for future you can be more, um, uh, what is the word? More um, equipped. Mm to make a better decision. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's true in the world of marketing. In, in, in the world of marketing, you put out an ad, an ad uh, you put out two ads, one does really well, and the other, uh, and you spent $1,000 on it, and the other does really bad, and you spent $1,000 on it, and the only difference is, for example, you know, the, the, the title that you wrote, and you could either look at it and go, oh, you wasted $1,000 on that bad ad, or you go, no, we've got the data that that, that kind of title doesn't work. Yeah. And so actually I've saved tens of thousands of dollars yeah. because from now on I'm not going to use that style of, mm. of, uh, of, of title. So if anybody struggles with decisions, sticking to decisions or, make, or regretting things in life, of course, first and foremost, reliance upon Allah. But as a hack in your brain, yeah. just tell yourself you've got the data on it. Yeah, I love that. I love hack, brain hacks, as you know. Yeah. And again, I, I want to keep, I want to uh, keep linking this back to like the marriage situation because since we brought it up, in that, with that, if you're apprehensive about being rejected or something like a talking stage not going well, or whatever, you can use the exact same analogy where it's like, okay, by doing this, by, go, by, by go, starting this process and knowing that I might get rejected or things may not work out like the first four times, maybe the fifth time uh, I find, find a wife or find a husband, you're, you're gathering data in that time that you otherwise wouldn't have the chance to, to That's gather, true, yeah. right? If you're someone who's in their 20s, and I've seen this with a couple of brothers, they just, their 20s passing by, now they're like 30s, and then they start looking because pretty much like you have to now at that point, right? And now they've, they sort of, they've almost robbed themselves of the opportunity to gather data. Now it's more about need to find someone quickly who sort of fits this very niche criteria because I'm, you know, I'm getting on a bit, whatever, whatever. If you take on this procedure of like, I'm going to look for a couple of years, I'm going to do, you know, again, gather data, you get the opportunity to say, oh, I thought I was going to like um, uh, a spouse that was like this and this, but spending time with this person, like with the Wally, 
I understood that I don't actually like that. Maybe I can, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's so true. So you, you give yourself the ability to actually use that data. Whereas you wait five, 10 years to start looking, you use that ability, you lose that, that cushion of time to actually gather and then use it. Yeah, yeah. Instead, you're just like, oh, I gathered some data, but kind of have to like get a move on. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just stop. I think in this day and age, one of the big worries for people is uh, unfortunately finances. And like, yeah. um, th and yeah, that's always a tough discussion because in, in, in some ways that's such a valid worry and in other ways it's really not. I think you and I kind of like teach more on, on the idea of it, not, of it being not because both of us have been in the situation where we've got married, we haven't really had that much money and then like come our lives provided, we've built well. our lives and in, in many ways like having a spouse helps that because you feel mentally you have more to work to, for and towards to the family. You feel all of a sudden you, as a man you feel more responsible so you make mm -hmm. it happen. Secondly, um, you uh, get that aid in, in your kind of life in the sense of like, um, the two of you are partners, uh, you know, in life now. And, and so you, all of these, uh, you get a risk with, with, with marriage, with children. But I think for a lot of people, that's a, a real concern. Yeah. And it's, no, I, I suppose, normal to have that concern, isn't it? It is normal to have a concern, but... But it's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, one remedy to this is also like, just like broad... <sighs> Broadening your make money, yeah, yeah, get money. Yeah. Broadening your horizons and like traveling a bit, yeah. Because a lot of people were like, they're very, they're stuck in this. All right, I was born in London, I must remain in London. Bro, it's true. You know? They're stuck yeah. in this mentality. It was like, well, to get married, I need um, uh, to be able to rent here and pay groceries here. It's like, bro, like maybe you just like move like two hours up north at least. You know what I mean, first and foremost, make hijra, yeah, yeah. like leave. If that's not possible because you've got parents, you need to look after something like that, bro. You could. I know one brother who just moved. He's got his own circumstances. He moved from London to um, Peterborough. Yeah. Two hours up the road. But he still is connected via train, so it's not that bad for him. He still works in London. He is he unhappy? No. Yeah. <laughs> but he's saving money. Yes. <laughs> is it a much worse place to live? <laughs> no. Like, no, but he's, you happy, know, he's happy. You know, Fawaz is showing me. I, said, no, I keep mentioning Fawaz in this podcast, but I've spent a lot of time with him recently. Um, so he was mentioning that. Was it, it was you, wasn't it? That was the thing about Thailand or Malaysia? What was it? Malaysia or Thailand? The £750 a month. Oh, Bro. Bro, he found a place in That's Thailand. That's expensive in Thailand. No, no, no yeah, but no, yeah, but listen to what you get. Listen to what you get, bro. This guy was like, you get a what was it? A golf course oh, in, your, yeah, in his enough. house. You're on a private golf, oh, a private golf course. <laughs> you have your own golf range in your house. Right. You got a personal golfer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Three bedroom villa. Three bedroom villa. That's what I'm saying, man. Comes with the maid. Private pool. Private, pool. private, jacuzzi. private jacuzzi. That's mad. Yeah. Remote from everyone. <laughs> No, I have oh, to because yeah, he hasn't right. got a mic. Yeah. Um, what else do you do? Uh, Aussies, like state of the art. Yeah. Yeah, a luxury. And it was £750 a month. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So now if you're like, I've just got married and I need a one bedroom studio flat. Yeah. If in Thailand it's 750 for that, I, I imagine it's like peanuts for a studio flat or whatever. Yeah, so, oh yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, there's loads of people, again, this whole nomad passport bros trend that's happening. I want to speak about that. Maybe not today, but maybe another day. But if you delve into their content, a lot of them are in Bali, Thailand, Indonesia, and they're just living off like pennies, basically. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, but I wouldn't even, like, again, I wouldn't recommend Thailand specifically. I could say, again, like, even in the Gulf, people mistake, like, there's a lot of places in the Gulf that are extremely cheap to live. Maybe like, in Indonesia as well. Indonesia is a good place. Um, yeah. Egypt, bro, even Ajman up the road from two hours from here. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's so it's cheap. True. It's true, yeah. Bro, yeah. go, go rent your, you and your wife um, a, a one bedroom studio. You're paying like half of what you pay in London, and yeah. you're getting a nice life. You're living in a Muslim country. And yeah, I saw I, you after you told me about Ajman prices. I was looking at them. And I was really impressed. It's, it's, yeah, you've, yeah. For like the same price you would rent a st like studio in London, you basically can get a big villa. Yeah. In like in in, in Ajman, so it's, yeah. it is incredible. It really is. Um. So that's not basically that's not an excuse. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. So um, there was something else which was so we mentioned you mentioned we mentioned kind of like nursery uh, uh, mm. and that started up again added routine and then we you were talking about the podcast sorry about those sounds it's my uh, laptop I don't it probably can't be heard on the on the mic to be fair um, you were saying that you haven't caught up with the podcast probably because you're not doing the nursery ones and stuff and yeah. that's like one of the main ways I also uh, listen to podcasts audiobooks things like that yeah um, but I thought I would share. Um, how I structure those drives and how I get benefit from those drives. So basically, um, the, the, the school that Zachary goes to is, uh, 
is not the closest school that he could go to. I probably mentioned this before in the pod, but it's like 35 minutes from my house drive, which um, there and back is an hour. If you don't have to stay, that's last year I was doing it. I was like going to and from. And so that's two hours of driving a day. And then when you put that into, that's 10 hours of driving. Oh, that's 10 hours that you're away from your desk a week, right? Which is kind of a hard sell. But the reason I went to uh, this particular school as opposed to other schools that could have been closer is that it kind of hit all of the nails that I wanted it to hit or hit, it ticked all the boxes I wanted it to tick, which was that it was uh, English, um, it was English school as in English curriculum, uh, but it was a Muslim school uh, and the teachers and also in each class they have an English speaking teacher from England and they or from Amer England or America, I think, and they have an Arabic a local Arabic speaking teacher. So in each class, so, and in each class, they learn in both English and in Arabic. And so they learn the language, learning the Adhkar, and it's a Muslim school. And on top of that is uh, British curriculum, which again, not essential, but for me, I grew up in British curriculum. There's an element of the eye, it's, it's something I'm comfortable with. And so I wanted to tick those boxes. And the most important of all of those things was obviously that it was a Muslim school. And so because of that, I've chosen to drive Zakaria all that distance. It's important to add that um, that preface so that I can explain the journey. So then, then I was like, well, okay, I want to do that sacrifice uh, for the sake of Allah, uh, for Zachariah's like upbringing, for him to be like in Muslim surrounding. Now, if that's the case, how can I use that ten hours a week to benefit? So then I was like, well, I can listen to um, whether it's digital marketing podcasts, e uh, audiobooks, uh, podcasts in general about business, um, and then all, and then also like Islamic. Uh, benefits right of some sort so the, what i decided i would do is on the way there to the nursery i had listened to something that was uh ben would benefit me my spirituality whether it's a lecture or quran or something like that and that would like allow me give me the permission to on the way back listen to something that would benefit me in the dunya like uh, for work right and so that's how i've been doing it mm. and um so what I was doing uh, until recently was we would listen to Quran every morning all the way into nursery and we were doing we were listening to Juz Amma and I found that it didn't make it was really good um, it was good for my revision it was good for like Zachary now he goes into the Quran he asks for Quran and stuff mm. but it didn't necessarily help in him memorizing surahs as much as I thought he would, and I think for that, at his age, you need active memorization. You need to sit with him and, and re get him to read you, and you teach him line by line. And even though there's always benefit in listening to the Quran, but then um, what I switched to recently was the Sira class with uh, Ustad Abdurrahman Hassan's Sira class. And um, and so now what I'm doing is, because I, so now what I'm doing is I'm basically like on the journeys, I'm either doing Quran or the Sira class, either there or on the way back. I'm actually switching it up a bit. Um, and I'm listening to the, like either a podcast and stuff like that on the way back. Right now I'm re-listening to, I started re-listening to Chris Voss's Never Split the Difference, one of my favorite books. Then I started re-listening to Dale Carnegie's How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. And then recently I've been listening to some TED Talks and stuff like that. And so um, that's basically like, the things I've been switching mm. up with. The benefit I wanted to give was in the CEDA class, sometimes when you listen to these classes, it can be quite, um, it can sometimes be a lot to take in, a lot of information. And, um, but what I found is, is that when, I'm like listening to them and I'm driving. Um, because there's in, in some, you know, in, in, in Odd Bay, although you can't write them down, write down notes, because you're doing the same drive every day and it's like the back of your hand, you yeah. really take in actually a lot more mm. than you might take in by just watching it on the computer. Yeah. Because there's like other distractions that you get up and stuff like that. You can't go anywhere. You can't get up. The drive you're used to, obviously you've got your eyes on the road and stuff. But I've, I've been able to take in a, a lot of it, a lot more of it than I thought. I thought it'd be very passive, but it's actually been quite active. Yeah. And so in one of the recent ones, I learned the story of Abu Dhar. And I was amazed by the story, bro. Like oh, yeah. I heard about like where the um, the hadith about um, Zamzam came from uh, in that story. Uh, two hadith I think about Zamzam in that story. One is about how Zamzam water is food, and so um, 
uh, the Sahabi was having only Zamzam water for like I think like thirty days or something, and the Prophet said Allah already, and and yet he and yet he actually got chubby off of it. He said. And that's when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Zamzam water is food. And there's another hadith about Zamzam water which is it is for it is for what you have it for. I think something so like that. that. Um, and, uh, and but a lot of other benefits bro mm. like about just the whole story bro about how his brother went to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then so he uh, who wanted to see him himself and then he went there and then Abu Bakr Siddiq was like can I take this can I take him into my house as my guest and then about how like Abu Bakr Siddiq fed him and bro, all these things increase your iman so yeah. much bro like the detachment from the dunya bro is so amazing like um, the Sheikh was speaking about how um, uh, the Sahabi he had not had food or drink other than Zamzam for an extended period of time, which I believe to be 30 days. And then when Abu Bakr Sadiq uh, was like, can I take him in uh, as my guest? And the Prophet Wasallam said yes. Then Abu Bakr Sadiq fed him that night. And that was the first meal that the Sahabi had had. And, um, and then uh, Ustad Abdul Rahman said that, that even that meal, um, some of the scholars say that that meal was like some raisins. And it just puts into perspective that these people who were promised Jannah, the dunya was like, um, there was a detachment from it. It doesn't mean that they didn't um, have dunya, or they didn't have the opportunity for dunya, or they didn't value like wealth. Uh, but, uh, or not that, not, that, not that they did not not value wealth because, um, I, because I, the, uh, the value was in the deen but not that they didn't understand that um, and, and there are many Sahabi so, uh, so, many of the Sahaba had a lot of wealth as well but it was the, it was the idea of detaching yourself from the dunya that I found really um, amazing the idea that um, is the, the, by the way the idea of detaching yourself from the dunya is separate to whether you have it or not it's not about um, I want to be poor it's about not having a love for the dunya which i found really encouraging in, in a lot of these stories and it's like we can we can simultaneously try and improve and increase our business and work and at the same time detach ourselves from the dunya so then i was thinking how what are some practical ways i can do that and um, i thought some practical ways i could do that is by not trying to achieve every luxury that i want just because i want it by default because i want it that could be as little as, um, uh, and, and actually like allowing yourself to have some hardship. That could be as little as, is obviously we live in Dubai, it's very hot here, and a lot of people have electric scooters. I had an electric scooter, the battery mashed up, so I was like, I need to get another one. And then I was thinking to myself, well, I could get myself another one. Nothing's stopping me from getting myself another one. But also, why not just detach myself from the idea of, oh, I want something, so I'm going to get it. Why not just <clears throat> detach myself from that and not get it just for the sake of um, adding a layer of not necessarily getting anything that I want disciplining your soul and, a little and, bit yeah and just and just walking because there's nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with walking a bit in the heat yeah and so sorry I went on a tangent bro but no, I that was beautiful bro um, and now, now no time for your comments yeah <laughs> <laughs> goodbye I think I'll just um, one last point just on that no, I'm joking I was just adjusting the audio yeah you no <laughs> Um, like listen to the Sira is amazing man and um, I feel like because you get these the, you get the context around a hadith when like certain ayat were revealed you get a story ab about it so you, it's like a bit of tafsir is in there as well because like you're going through the story and like incidents will happen or battles will happen and so on and so forth and then whoever's teaching the Sira will tell you this is when this ayat was revealed and you understand oh wow that's what it's referring to and it's just it's an amazing way to to learn so much without even meaning if that makes sense without meaning to you think you're just going to learn about the um you know the the story of the prophet's life but you you do that but obviously it's all inter intertwined with revelation yeah. so you end up learning so much about different when, when things are revealed and so on and so forth so it's a very easy way to learn a lot on home back this yeah. is zero classes i feel like I said, I didn't expect to learn so much about the yeah. Sahaba, but of course, like you said, of course yeah, you would. It yeah. just naturally comes into the, yeah. to the story. Another little hack is, um, listen to the car is great. If you listen to it while you sleep, uh, as in like you fall asleep to it, your brain will still listen as you sleep a little bit. You've got the AirPod in. I've heard a few people say that. Is that scientifically true or is it bro science? I, I don't, it's a bit of both. I okay. Think. Yeah, a bit of car science in there. But I, yeah. I, I think it is a bit true. It makes sense. You, you can still actively listen when you're sleeping, I think. Potentially it could be true for some people and not true for others. No? Well, yeah, possibly. I'll do some more research and I'll get back to you.
Yeah, because there's another brother um, who was here, who's staying with me, mm. and um, he said the same thing to Shahid and I. He said, he said that he falls asleep to lectures for the same reason. Yeah, I mean... Something like that. Yeah, I mean, um, inshallah, like, it gives some sort of benefit. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, inshallah. Gives but me and Shahid didn't believe it. Yeah, I'm going to like, no. get some actual research on that and see. It's, it's, not, it's not the first time anyone said that, so there I could be it, science I think, behind it. I think it is backed by science, but I just can't remember if it actually is, but I think it is. Um, but yeah... What do you think about sleeping with the airport in? A bit dodgy, isn't it? Yeah. I sometimes go for like the whole day, like even at night to have an airport in. I have friends who do that. Can't be good, isn't it? So, the, so by the way, <laughs> <laughs> when I just said I have friends who do that, that made me sound like you're not a friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, oh, you do that? I have oh, friends who do I've that. I've got people I respect who do that as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't like... I remember there was a time that Onley would always have his airports in. I don't know if he still does, but... Um, you almost forget yeah. that it's there, don't you? Yeah, I'm guilty of it. Sometimes I realise, wow, I haven't taken these off like since last night. It's just like, that's bad. That can't be good. Yeah, and also like, what about the Bluetooth thing? Yeah, that's that what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, am I in mortal danger by doing this? Pro- yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. So you should like try and plug a like iPhone charger and just leave it charging <laughs> yeah. your phone. Like, yeah. I must have some battery now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Inshallah khair. Alhamdulillah, bro. Uh, it was nice, man. It was a lovely chat. It was nice to get to back to back to routine, back good, to having good. a chinwag and now on the F- FG table. Absolutely, man. Thank it's you so much. You. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. No, and uh, by the way, uh, we're gonna do. We, I'm gonna release episodes like uh, whenever they're recorded now. So this episode we recorded on Monday. I'm gonna try and get it out today, uh, if not tomorrow, uh, rather than wait for Fridays. I think that um, yeah. we're not gonna do the whole waiting for Friday things anymore. I like it. Yeah. All right. Abu Jazakallah Khair. May Allah bless you. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam.